raised in Iowa, where all of the corn grows. Yes, we grow a lot of corn. And yes, I do love the corn. Um, don't worry, I'm not a child of the corn. That's, that's, that's a myth. That's not a real thing. Um, so I grew up in a church, and my parents ran the nursery. And so I was kind of like a thing. Like, it was a small church, so everybody knew us, and we were, you know, the evil eels, and so I was kind of, from this very young age, expected to act in a certain way and do certain things, you know, save at four years old in my crib, you know, that was a thing, I guess, and, you know, went forward every single Sunday in kids' church to recommit my life to Christ and accept salvation, because um, at seven I really didn't get the point that, you know, you do it once, you're, you know, yeah. So that was how I grew up. Um, and a period came where uh, my father decided that the best way to love his family was to make more money. And so he would get up at 7 in the morning and leave the house before I got up and uh, wouldn't come back until 1 in the morning. And then he did that pretty much every day for the whole week. I might see him on Saturdays if I was lucky. I'd see him on Sundays. He'd nap in the afternoons, and then it would start all over again. So I was the only boy in the family, so I kind of grew up with all girls around me, and I never really knew what it meant to really follow God as a man, what that looked like. So uh, when I was very young, I became an addict at age 12, and uh, all this time I still had to keep up that whole persona of who I was supposed to be. So, you know, I was in the church, and I'm doing all the right things, saying all the right things, um, and all the while behind closed doors, I have this terrible addiction running my life. And I get to high school, uh, we had moved churches, and, you know, again, kind of that thing of everybody started to know who we were, and I had to keep up that persona again, and I'm on the worship team, and I'm being, you know, a student leader, and leading Sunday schools, and doing drama team stuff, going on missions trips. And uh, eventually, uh, my senior year came around and I went through all this crazy stuff in the span of like one week. My grandmother died, my pastor I had known for 11 years just got fired from the church for whatever reason. This happened, that happened, my uncle was hit by a truck. And all of this happened in one week. And I quickly realized that I didn't know how to handle any of it. And everyone was just like, oh, like, turn to God, you know, just pray about it. And I'm like, what does that look like? What does it look like to really pray and to trust in God and to look to God? And all of a sudden, God just grabbed me and just pulled me out of this lifestyle that I was in. And just immediately cold turkey, I quit. And that whole summer, I just struggled with anxiety and depression and paranoia. I mean, to the point where like, I look back on it now and I'm like, this is absolutely ridiculous. But I couldn't even nap in my own home unless somebody else was there because I was so afraid that some crazy person with like an ax or something was gonna break into my house and kill me in my sleep. I, it was to that point that it was so real and so terrifying to me, I couldn't do anything by myself. And uh, then I came up to North Central with that mindset, with, with that going on. And uh, I quickly find myself in just this community of all of these Christians, all these young people chasing after God. And I was still trying to figure out what it meant to be a real Christian because I had been faking it for so long. And I just got thrown into ministry right away. And uh, it was a good thing because it taught me how to pray and it taught me how to lead and it gave me kind of an inside view of really strong Christian brothers and sisters. But I still felt like there was something missing. And all this time, you know, I'm focusing on this and I'm focusing on this and, you know, I'm working through things and I'm doing all of these separate things and trying to really find out, okay, who is God? What does it mean to follow God? What does it mean to be a godly man, and uh, jumped into a relationship earlier than I should have. Um, like I 
first, you know, you have that hunger and face where it's like, oh my gosh, like, you know, this and that. And you say things and you do things and you send each other little cute cards with little notes on them because it's just what you do. Um, and so, like, at first, it seemed great. And then uh, slowly, uh, summer came and, you know, I went back home for the summer and she stayed up here and we were far apart and communication was scattered and I come back to school and I'm like, oh, this is going to be great. And just the whole semester, like, not even just that relationship, but I just felt my life just tank, just start going downhill. And uh, the addiction popped back up again and just tried to grab me again. And it got to the point in December of that year that I was like, okay, God, if you don't intervene, I'm just, I'm done with you because there's, there's nothing right now. I just feel so numb and so dead. And I distinctly remember at that exact point, he told me, for the last three and a half years, you have been living in fear and not love. And so I'm like, okay, well, what does that mean? <laughs> you know? Um, and he quickly took me to John 418. There is no fear in love. Perfect love casts out fear because fear has to do with punishment. He who fears is not made perfect in love. And so I began to do all these word studies into love and what that meant to look at, you know, different things and uh, get different books and all this stuff. And three or four days after God told me this, I'm flying out to Cairo, Egypt to spend six months doing missionary work overseas. And I'm just like, what the heck? Like, <laughs> you're still, it's three days ago and I'm supposed to like, do all this stuff for six months in a foreign country and tell people about you, and you just told me I've, I've not even been living right now. <laughs> okay? Um, so I get there, and immediately, I just felt all of these things start coming out, and I realized just all of these things in my life that didn't line up with Christ. And I don't know if any of you have ever gone overseas before to do any kind of work or stuff like that before, but it's like you're taken out of everything that seems familiar, everybody, like you just feel completely alone, and the only familiar thing is God. That's it, because everything else has changed. And uh, I just put into practice what the team has in practice there, which is two hours a day with God every morning. And I started doing that, and I just watched as my life changed. And as people there started pushing me and, and uh, tugging me and just really challenging me, calling me out on, you know, that's not Christ-like. That's not, that's not how we do things. This is how we do things. And I just watched as God completely transform my life. And I came out of that season, and I come back here, and uh, I, got, I got off the plane, and I'm in my house, and my mom just looks at me and she goes, what did you do with my son? <laughs> and I just, you know, started sharing all these stories and everything that I went through and the doors that God opened up and the crazy, crazy things that he did. And uh, by the time I left Cairo, Egypt, I had found out I had some serious health issues. Uh, I had lost like, a ridiculous, like 30 or 40 pounds in a matter of a month and a half, which I've gained that back now, so that tells you how skinny I was. Then. It was kind of, kind of, yeah, kind of creepy. Um, and, you know, the relationship had ended and all these things. And yet I was closer to God than I had ever been. I felt like I had lost completely everything that I had held dear. But what I got was Christ. And, you know, I'm still learning what that looks like. I'm still growing and I'm still um, learning what it means to trust in God completely. But through this last year, year and a half, I've seen God completely transform my life and do ridiculous things that I could never have imagined just because I prayed and I said, okay, God, like, this is what I can do. Now do what I can't. And he has been faithful, just utterly faithful through the whole thing.